G'day YouTube, welcome back. I'm uh, finally going to do something about this. Um, I'm going to have to do this in two parts because I haven't got a great deal of time today. We're going to connect the JK BMS um, to my... Fucking jeez, I've got to clean this up. I've got my development fucking servo sitting up there on top of my little nuts that... Yeah, all sorts of shenanigans going on. Um, so, I've got myself a cable. Now, I, it says you've got to use a B-type Ethernet cable to, go, to connect the can. So I've got a can connector down there, which I'm going to have to Google because I um, don't have the faceplate for it, so I don't know which one is actually the can connector. This goes out of that into the can connector on that. And then we've got to set the appropriate protocol on the BMS um, so that we can... Uh, communicate with the servo control. There's something I want to get out of this. Um, I've had a bit of a chinwag with the mate and I, I witnessed some really funny behaviour. When we were doing the integration for the JK BMS with our inverter, um, the reason we stopped doing that is that when we would like produce the incorrect messages or, or, or messages not at the right interval, uh, it would actually shut the inverter down, which is why I went and got a second servo controller so I could do this independently of our, of our production system. Um, now, he said that uh, when DVCC is enabled that effectively the servo controller is in charge. Now, I don't entirely agree with that, mostly because DVCC stands for Distributed Voltage and Current Control. Um, so, like, the servo controller might be able to set some limits, but it's not actually in control. The idea of DVCC is that the control is distributed um, and you can get shared voltage sense, you know, shared temperature sense or, or current sense, whatever the case may be. Um, and actually, the diversity of that information coming in means it can come from a more, more reliable source. Like the shunt, for example, should give you your battery voltage because it's closest to the batteries, right? Or in the case where you've got a BMS that's integrated, it should give it to you. And that way you get some, some indication of what the voltage drop is between your charges and the actual charge, like the, the battery power itself. Um, so I want to validate that. So we're going to start by, today is going to be just configure the JK BMS uh, and, and, and get it plugged in. Um, and once it's talking, and then, and then I'm going to cut the video there, and we'll, tomorrow I'll probably do the inverter install here. Um, yeah, and then we'll work our way out from there, because I want to validate this, or at least either validate what he said or dispel it as, as you know, as maybe a misconception. So um, bear with me, I'm going to get this out, I'm going to climb up the top there and plug it in, and um, to be honest with you, I don't even know what port this goes in. Does it go in the BMS port or does it go in the VE CAN port? Don't know. Let's figure it out. I appreciate people like, hey man, you got to clean that floor up. I, I, yeah, I will do that just as soon as I can move this stuff. If I get in here with a blower, I'm going to be moving all these cables around, which aren't in a particularly, um, let's face it, it's not the safest idea in the world. And the shed's open. So what I really should do is put a bloody door on it, shouldn't I? Let's Google this quickly. Um, so what have we got? JK Inverter BMS. Um, what do we got? Let's have a look. Surely, what the hell? 16 kilowatt hours. Ah, oh, we can build them cheaper than that, mate. That is expensive. A few moments later. Here we go. That's what we want. What do we got there? So can is left hand bank second plug in. So if we go, oh, well, let's get the screen recording up. So, okay, what we're looking for is, oh, uh-oh. That's not a good sign, is it? What happened there? Oh, weird. Okay, don't know what happened there, but we lost connectivity with the inverter for some reason. So what we're looking for here is user data UART CAN protocol. We're in the JK BMS CAN protocol. Now I think we can either we can either go Victron CAN bus or we can go Pylon Tech CAN bus. It does not really matter. Now hit OK. If we've got the right cable. We should be seeing a battery show up here, but it doesn't appear that that's the case. Maybe I'm going to go up there and switch it over to the um, BMS CAN port and see what happens. Well, this is not a good sign. Um, so validated from the image, uh, let's jump under that, that we've got um, nearest the lights, is, the first one is RS485, the next one is CAN. So nearest the lights, RS485, can we're definitely connected but we're not seeing anything there so I've used um, I'm gonna go that's that should just be working right 
we have got options here for 500 kilobit can but we're going to go pylon tech low power so every time i change that it's dropping off the um it's dropping off my console connection hmm not a good sign i wonder what else i'm going to try and figure out what else i could do here Well, uh, got it, eventually. How good is that? Um, so, I'm gonna, because this has already dragged on way longer than I was expecting it to. Um, it's not a straight through B type cable. Um, like, that's what I was led to believe anyway. Maybe it is on other versions, but um, also there's, depending on the version, the CAN connector could be the one on the right or it could, could be the one on the left. Um, so somebody did comment in there and I really appreciate it. I'll see if I can find the comment that I was probably in the RS-485 port. Now, I was in the correct port, but he was correct to point out that I was that it could have been the other way around. Um, so I went and looked and there's two revisions of the front board. One has the can on the right, the other one has the can on the left. Um, but what actually, it's not a Type-B cable just straight through, at least not for this particular version. So what I ended up doing is I found another guy's channel and someone commented, and again, I'll, I'll post the guy's comment here. What an absolute fucking legend. Um, I went to this guy's channel and I watched it and he'd, he'd written the sort of cabling scheme out on a little piece of cardboard, right? So I'd, I'd urge you to go over there and at least throw the guy a like because um, it's sort of saved the day here. But I've gone ahead and, and sort of drawn it out a little bit, a little bit more, you know, uh, in, in PowerPoint instead of on a piece of cardboard. So I'll, I've shared that to my community page already. Um, but basically what it was, pin 3 comes through to, to pin 8 at the BMS end, so from the Victron end, and then it's um, the brown wire, which I think is pin 6, comes through to pin 5, brown white comes through to, to pin 4. So um, I'll throw that up there for you. Um, that's, that's functioning. Um, I can move on to the next bit, which was uh, testing some of the... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mount the inverter, so I'll do that in the next video. Um, but right this minute, I'm pretty happy with that. That's, um, yeah, I don't know why it says input us, but um, is it expecting me to rename it? Who knows? Happy as a pig in shit. That is awesome. Everything seems to be working. Uh, can't rename it. That's all right. I don't really care if I'm going to rename it or not. Yeah, good, good stuff. Anyway, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll leave it there and, um, and we'll... Uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Appreciate the guys who are subscribing. Absolutely love the comments. You've uh, you've kind of saved the day here, guys. So appreciate it. Thanks.